So basically what we have here is this is a two-dimensional problem, so it's in the xy plane, and we have some line A that's defined here by this little triangle. We'll get into that a little bit later. Um, but anyway, it's just some oblique line that sits there, and there's some angle, some unknown angle, theta, between these two vectors. And we have a force vector that's 650 newtons, and that's pointed straight up the y-axis. Okay. Now the question is, find f sub a, the component of f, the component of this vector f that lies along the line a. So if you think about it here, this is pulling straight up, but any vector can be decomposed into components, right? If I have any oblique vector, it's a little more difficult to see since this one's straight up like this, but any oblique vector, I can split it into an x component and a y component. You've been doing that forever. And any oblique vector in three-dimensional space, you can split it into an x component, a y component, and a z component. Now here, we're not asking for the x and the y component. We already know that this vector f is purely in the y direction. There is no x component of f. But we're asking you, how much of this vector lies in the a direction? lies in the a direction. And that's a question that you're typically not asked too much until you get into something like mechanics. When you're dealing with a dot product in basic physics or you deal with a dot product in basic calculus, you learn you know, what it's for and stuff, but typically you're not asked to find what is a vector component in some off weird, weird direction. But that's a really common thing in mechanics because think about a bridge, think about a truss. Right? A truss assembly with lots of obliquely you know, arranged beams that are supporting the thing. Well, those beams are placed there on purpose to support the load. So it's really nice to know how much of the weight of that bridge is in this beam's direction, how much of it's in compression, how much of it's in tension. So we're going to have to be doing that as we get into more complicated problems. That is the genesis, and that's kind of like the origin story of where that comes from. We want to find out how much of this force um, would lie in the A direction. Another way to look at that would be to say, if you're having problems visualizing that, pretend A is some kind of metal beam, like an I-beam or something, part of a bridge. So pretend it's just sitting there and it's anchored to something here. And let's say I tie a rope to the end of it and I start pulling on it. I think you would agree that some of that force is going to be transmitted along A. If it's just this I-beam sitting there, you know, think of it embedded in the ground or something, I tie a rope and I start pulling up on it, you know, I'm going to tend to pull the, the thing out of the ground. I'm also going to be transmitting some of that force uh, parallel to that, to that guy. And so that's what I'm trying to find out. How much of my force of 600 newtons or 650 newtons is actually lying in the parallel direction of A? So that's a long backstory. So it's a very common type of problem. Tell me how much of this vector lies in an arbitrary direction. Now the A vector is also a little weird because I don't give you any end points except you know that it starts at the origin. I don't give you the end point here. I give you this weird triangle. This is telling